Good morning, welcome to the episode of Breakfast Analysis. Today we are talking about map statistics. Uh, we're talking about bomb site stats, regional stats. We're going to cross those and compare and see how different regions uh, perform on different bomb sites on different maps, what those tendencies tend to be. You'll notice right away that we're in a new location. I have moved. Um, that's the reason that there's been a bit of a break. I explained that at the end of my last video. Um, that's the reason why everything behind me looks so different. Um, and uh, and yeah, we're rocking Tempo Storm today because uh, I think Jarvis was a fantastic pickup. And uh, I want to see the boys do well on Tempo Storm. But otherwise, let's get into it. Uh, map statistics. Again, a couple things to note before we jump into this. I'm only looking at the top four regions. So that's the U.S. Division, that's the European League, that's Brazil, and that's APAC North. Um, and I'm also only looking at the regular seasons. Again, this is mostly just to make things a little bit easier to compare and a little bit easier to collect these stats. Um, because it was all available on CGG uh, in these formats. But putting them all together and comparing them um, would have been... Uh, it would have been more to include the majors and stuff, so uh, I decided against it. This also doesn't include the North American Qualifier, um, which included Dark Zero, Mirage, Temple Storm, and the Sonics. So do keep that in mind. Um, I kind of like that we're only using the regular season because in the majors, teams bring out a lot of new stuff. Um, so there's a lot of new strategies that get played out. And we often see um, outliers jump out, right? Maybe a team will have a lot more success on one bomb site, less success on uh, another bomb site. And you get that in the regular season too, but it's more common in the majors. And it's nice to sort of look at the regular season as like, all right, well, this is a chunk of meta. The majors really are like their own little meta. They're sort of the start to the next meta, right? Um, in terms of how teams play different bomb sites, because a team will bring a new strat, and then you know a bunch of teams will copy, and et cetera, et cetera, and you know the game will grow. So um, it is going to be looking just the regular season. Um, one last thing to note with these stats is the regions are all different, and so they don't play the same amount, uh, amount of maps. Europe plays significantly less maps in a regular season than most regions. Brazil plays significantly more maps uh, compared to most regions. So br Europe might be a little bit more you know, fluctuated. Um, the overall totals might lean a little bit more into how Brazil likes to play the game, but it is what it is. Not a lot we can do about that. So let's jump into things and take a look at these map stats. So we'll start with Consulate. Consulate is the oldest map in the map pool. Uh, it has similar rates for all the regions. North America has the highest defensive win rate at 57. APAC has the lowest with 50%. Um, but the maps really does play differently across different regions. The big difference is in North America, the bomb site of CEO, the top floor, is almost never played. It's 100% fallen out of favor. It's been played three times in the regular season and was won once. So really not uh, a popular bomb site at all. In both Europe and Brazil, it's the second most popular bomb site. All regions uh, favor the basement as the most popular bomb site. Um, and for APAC, it's a close third, with Lobby actually being the second most um, most common bomb site. Um, the win rates are very interesting. Uh, across CEO, the top floor, Brazil has the highest win rate on this. I think a lot of that, you, you know, you can contribute some of that to the uh, the runouts and the aggressive plays you can do when you're defending that top floor. And obviously, Brazil likes to do a lot of those, and so that's uh, that's favors into their play style. So it makes sense they have the highest win rate at at uh, at 63%. Um, North America has the lowest win rate, obviously, with one out of three, 33%. But you know, that's uh, that's kind of an outlier. Um, EU has 46%, APAC has 50%, so those are pretty pretty close together. But um, it's interesting that uh, North America really doesn't favor this. They're obviously favoring uh, Lobby a lot more. North America has a ridiculously high win rate on Lobby at 74%. That's pretty crazy. Um, and they played a lot, 23 different rounds. So that's a pretty sizable sample size. Um, it's bigger than what Europe has played on it. Um, and so Lobby has been, you know, obviously very popular, very successful for North America. And I think that one of the reasons why they don't play CEO very much is because that Lobby is so much stronger. In a lot of ways, it is just sort of the same hold as a, as a top floor defense. But you have that extra layer to fall back to. In both cases, uh, teams are defending that top floor. They're defending projector. They're defending inside of the office if they can. Um, and then they're falling back. And the only difference is you have that opportunity to fall back. You're open to more rushes and stuff as well, uh, defending on that bottom floor. Um, but that's the trade-off you take. And, uh, and North American teams particularly like to take that trade. Um, APAC as well are, are very comfortable going lobby rather than uh, the top floor. Um... And then Teller's, Teller's Archive is that uh, that odd child. And in North America, it's really grown as the third bomb site, And it is, 
um, you know, what teams play. You bring a pulse, you throw C4s, you're pretty much good. Um, North American teams have really locked down defending the bottom floors for many, you know, let's say um, garage pushes. They don't really work at all in North America. I saw it work a little bit in Europe. Uh, the couple times I saw this, uh, this bomb site get played out. Um, but North America doesn't have a huge success rate on it. It's a 50% win rate out of a sample size of 20 rounds. Um, it's a little bit better than Brazil and APAC, who both have okay sample sizes. 14 rounds from Brazil, 43 win rate, 5 rounds from APAC at 40% win rate. EU also had only has 5 rounds in the regular season. They had an 80% win rate. Um, APAC and EU are pretty much, you know, impossible to, you know, those are outliers. The sample size is too small, but eh, Brazil's played it a fair amount of time. They have a slightly lower uh, win rate than North America. But the point I'm trying to make here is, like, this is not some amazing bomb site for North America, um, which is why it's, like, replacing CEO. It's just the NA really doesn't like CEO. You know, the windows are really difficult to hold on to. There's a lot of um, pressure from a lot of angles, um, and there's not many safe spots up on that top floor. So, um I don't think North American teams are going to, you know, make this big argument that, uh, that Teller's Archives is a really good bomb site and that uh, all the other regions are sleeping on it. I think North America just vastly underrates CEO compared to those other regions. Um, but, you know, maybe uh, the proper strat here, you know, the meta way that you should be playing this bomb site is just do what the Brazilians do and get aggressive and start jumping out of those windows. And that just needs to become the play style of North American teams when they go to CEO. Um, not saying it should replace Lobby, because again, NA teams seem to be doing really well on Lobby, but uh, I could see CEO working its way back in uh, to popularity, maybe if some, um, some playstyle changes happen in North America. Next up is Coastline, and uh, I wanted to talk about Coastline because, um, I mean, I want to talk about all the maps, but Coastline was one particularly I want to mention because it has this reputation for being a really attacker-sided map, right? And people say, oh, you know, attackers are going to win every round on, on Coastline, um, attackers are super favored, and they are. To an extent, attackers uh, are favored on Coastline. Um, but less so than I think people realize in North America and Europe. Uh, North America has a 53% win rate for the defense on coastline. Europe has a 52%. Uh, all regions have good sample sizes here. And uh, and that's on the low side, but that's still favoring the defense. I mean, this is still expected to go 3-3 three, three, uh, for the splits. Um, maybe 4-2 for defense, but probably 3-3. Three, three. So, and for both regions, both North America and Europe, there are other maps that have a lower uh, defender win rate. For Europe, Consulate has a 51% defender win rate. And for North America, Cafe actually has a 50% win rate, which we'll talk about that one later. Um, in Brazil and APAC, it is a lot lower. Um, in those regions, we see 36% win rate for defense in Brazil, 32% in APAC. So that sort of fits like the stereotype that Coastline has of being this really attacker-sided map. And I don't want to go in here and tell you that, you know, Coastline's defender-sided um, because globally it's not. And, uh, you know... Even 52, 53%, those aren't really, like, those are even stats. You don't call that defender-sided. So that's still uh, somewhat interesting. Um, but I think Coastline is more defender-sided than people give it credit for. Um, a Another interesting stat is sort of which order teams like to go into the bomb sites. North America has Kitchen as the most favored bomb site, followed by Hookah, followed by Bar. Um, Europe prefers bar first europe's the only region that uh, has played bar the most followed by hookah followed by kitchen the least which is a big change from north america um and then i believe brazil and apac both go hookah kitchen bar which again is sort of what i think most people have in their mind as the general rotation outside of ranked all regions do hate penthouse so at least there's some agreeance on that and you'll see that um with most maps there is sort of that one bomb site that every region hates and certainly for coastline that's penthouse uh, people are in agreeance of that um, but, uh, but I think the most interesting bomb site here is, uh, is Kitchen. And this is a really strange outlier, um, because North America is so different from every other region here. Um, the big thing with regards to Kitchen is, uh, globally, it's the worst bomb site in the game other than Barstock. Obviously. I mean, everybody knows Barstock's the worst bomb site. Um, but Kitchen is the worst win rate. It has a 36% win rate globally. Um, that's 24% in Brazil, 28% in Europe, and 31% in APAC. But for North America, the reason why it's so high globally, like, compared to those three, is because North America has a ridiculous 62% defensive win rate. North America is, you know, leagues above any other region defending on this bomb site, or they're leagues below attacking on this bomb site, depending on how you look at it. 
Um, and it's it's really shocking how huge the disparity is between North America and the other regions when defending the kitchen bomb site. And uh, and I don't have like a like an obvious clear. This is the reason why. I know a lot of North American teams like to play a couple of players upstairs. Um, you don't see a lot of just like service interest pushes from North American players. Um, usually NA attacks like to come through the window, like come through the bar. They don't not go service entrance, but there is a lot of variety there um, that perhaps there's not uh, as much in other regions. But it's something to note. Keep watching when when international tournaments come back and when you're watching the other regions, you know, if you're North America or if you're watching your region, if you're watching North American regions, uh, look out for Kitchen and just see, you know, how, how the defense is doing and what those differences might be or how the attackers are going because that's one that I really do want to look into. Um, I haven't focused on yet, but that's one that really caught my eye and surprised me quite heavily because as somebody who focuses on North America, I didn't realize the other regions were, um, were struggling so much on this bomb site. So that's a big reason why um, why North America has this bomb site so heavily, or has uh, has coastline relatively 50-50. The reason why Europe has this bomb site relative, or this map relatively 50-50, I should say, compared to Brazil and APAC, is because they're quite good at defending hookah. It's not quite the same uh, disparity that we see in North America and Kitchen, but Europe has a staggering 85% win rate when defending on hookah. That's far and away above uh, any other um, region. North America has the next highest win rate with 47 which is respectable, but nowhere near 85. And then both Brazil and APAC have a 33% win rate on hookah. And again, for uh, for APAC and Brazil, it's their most played bomb site. For Europe, it's their second most. For North America, it's uh, it's tied for their second most. Bar and hookah actually both have 17 plays um, across the regular season. So it's uh, it's not a bomb site the other regions aren't playing. It's not like they don't know how to play it, but Europe has seemingly done a much better job at defending on that, uh, that top floor bomb site. Um, and so that's sort of why they aren't in that, like, 36% overall win rate on, uh, on Coastline. So NA and Europe both sort of have one strong bomb site that keeps, um, Coastline's overall defensive win rate up that the, uh, you know, the other regions, Brazil and APAC, just don't have. Clubhouse is maybe the most equal map across all regions. Um, the US and EU are both, um more defender sided on this map 59 percent for both regions um for defensive win rates brazil's at 49 percent uh, and apex at 52 this is another one of those map ports where i think um at least in the west and in north america and europe we typically think of clubhouse as a really strong defensive map um but in brazil and apex that's really not the case brazil going as far as having it as their not their not their most attacker sided but second most attacker sided uh, after coastline and actually favoring the attack 49 percent um for the defense so uh, that's interesting to note, and again, where maybe your um, your biases and what you assume about a map might be thrown off a little bit. The big reason for that, I think, um, is uh, is both Brazil and APAC have at least one bomb site that's relatively weak. Um, all regions are relatively good on church. You know, 58% America, 59% Europe, 50% for Brazil, 55% APAC. So a little lower, but not you know not out of the ballpark. That's for sure. Um, for APAC, the big struggle bomb site seems to be CCTV, only 45% defensive win rate, which is quite significantly below uh, most regions. It's not the most played for any region, but it is the highest win rate for all regions except for APAC. 66% North America, 60% Europe, 57% for Brazil. So 45 is quite low for APAC. Um, and again, I'm not sure, you know, I haven't extensively watched APAC North, so I'm not sure exactly um, what's wrong. <laughs> I say that, you know, what's wrong with their um, top floor defense or what's wrong with their CCTV cache defenses or what's going super right with their CCTV um, and cache attacks. It also might just be a sample size problem. Well, they played it 71 times. Maybe not. Uh, maybe it is just the way that things fall, though, uh, every now and again, though. Um, well, they played it 55 times, excuse me, but still quite high. Next uh, bomb set we have is Jim, which is where Brazil really struggles a lot more than other regions. Again, for every region, it's the least played bomb site, with an exception. Um, and for every region, it is the worst. Yeah, worst win rate, except for APAC, who actually do quite well on it um, compared to the other bomb sites. Um, North America is 52%, Europe is 57%, APAC is 55%, Brazil only at 30%, depending on the gym and bedroom. 
So one of those reasons where um, Brazil is maybe struggling a little bit more than, than most, and that's one where maybe they should be looking to other regions. Um, that's sort of like what I'm finding interesting is like, all right, well, this whole region is struggling in this one area. Um, maybe they should look outwards. And we've seen that with APAC. We've seen that with Europe, with Brazil. I think we'll see it really with every, you know, we saw it with North America um, on consulate. We'll see it with every region um, going forward. But uh, it is interesting to note when a certain region just is really not confident in defending a bombsite. Or are really good at attacking a bomb site. And then the last, uh, you know, there is a fourth bomb site on Clubhouse. It's been played one time in the entire regular season from uh, from the four regions, North America. I believe it was E-United. I didn't fact check this. I think it was E-United defended bar stock once and lost. Technically the worst bomb site in the game at 0% win rate. You know, sample size of one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, bar stock is some ass, um, and nothing will ever change that unless uh, the whole map gets changed. I don't really don't think that there's going to be a big meta change that makes bar stock viable ever. That's just really bad bomb site. Next on the list is Villa, and uh, the first thing I want to talk about with Villa is in APAC. Um, overall, Villa's pretty standard for every region. Um, it's really standard for every region, really. 57% win rate for both um, the US and Europe, 54% in Brazil, and 59% in APAC, so really consistent. Um, but APAC sort of gets there in a different route. Um, most, you know, most teams are, are pretty strong on Aviator games, and then, like, okay at Kitchen, uh, and then okay at Trophy. Um, APAC is very good defending Aviator games. Those holds seem to go really well for them at 67% win rate compared to uh, the average global of 60%, and then uh, a really poor time on defending Kitchen, which is, of course, that first floor bomb, first floor bomb site at 50 or 47%. So um, a little bit of switch up from, from APAC, um, and that they're above the average on one bomb site, below the average on the other bomb site. Overall, defenders get to the same place, um, but that is maybe room for improvement on both attacking the top floor and then defending the bottom floor uh, in, in APAC. And then the other big thing, and probably the bigger thing to note about how a or uh, how Villa gets played across the regions, um, is North America's insistence on playing the kitchen over trophy. Um, in NA, it's been cemented that the secondary bomb site is kitchen, uh, and the top bomb site is trophy. Um, and in no other region is that really the case. Every other region seems to think that trophy uh, should be played second. And it is a better bomb site. Um, and in most regions, they would be correct. In both Europe and APAC, they do have a higher win rate on uh, on trophy stature than they do in the bombs on the bottom floor. In North America, however, and in Brazil, um, both regions do have more success defending on that bottom floor. In North America, obviously, we do a very uh, vertical hold, similar to you know the thought process on consulate, where you know you play lobby instead of uh, CEO because you can just do the same top floor hold, but then you fall back, right? And uh, and I'm not saying that it's that simple. There are obviously trade-offs um, to to defending on the bottom floor, but again, it seems North America are really willing to make that trade-off. Um, so I think that's interesting. That's something we've seen now repeated over a couple of different maps where NA is really favoring bomb sites from below um, that they can extend upwards rather than just defending the bomb site up above. So I think that's a pretty neat um, little statistic, and maybe something where Brazil should take a look at the bomb sites they're playing and say, well, you know what, you're finding more success on Kitchen. Um, I don't know. Again, I haven't watched enough Brazil to say if they're uh, if they're playing those top floor holds similar to North America, or if they're playing a different um, play style. But maybe they should try out um, playing a little bit more Kitchen and playing a little bit more of that bottom floor because that seems to have been working for them in the times they have gone there. And then the other big difference on Villa between the regions, and again, it's a split between North America and Brazil on one side, and then Europe and APAC on the other side of the argument, um, is if living or library is worth going to. Um, in all regions, it's not played very much. It's certainly um, the least played bomb site in all regions. But in NA and Brazil, it's been experimented with. Um, North America's played it six times in seven maps. Brazil's played it eight times in 16 maps. So ratio-wise, less in Brazil, but they're still willing to give it a shot. Um, Europe have never played the bomb site in nine maps, and APAC have never played the bomb site in six maps. So it's uh, it's that argument is, is it even worth giving a shot? And uh, certainly Brazil and North America seem to think so. Um, both regions have positive win rates on it, 67% for NA and 63% for, um, for Brazil. Whether it's, you know, going to be a staple bomb site, probably not. Um, I think we'd probably have to see the top floor really fall off um, for trophy statuary for that to happen. 
um, and maybe we'd get like a like a consulate situation happening on Villa. Um, but for sure, like I think it's still a good um, flip to it. And North American teams and Brazilian teams seem to be having successes just to throw it in to throw people off every now and again, play this bomb site and see how it goes. Um, but I think it's never not in the near future going to become a bomb site that people go to a lot of the times. I think probably Europe and APAC teams would have similar success if they tried also to mix it in every now and again to uh, to their rotations. Maybe to not play kitchen, you know, because they uh, uh, their kitchen win rates are not as high as what we see in North America and Brazil. So maybe it'd be worth giving a shot for those regions. Next, we'll be talking about CAFE, and there's a lot to talk about with CAFE. First of all, it seems the greatest divide comes between uh, Europe and Brazil uh, against sort of North America. APAC seem to be where the, the stats differentiate, um, with this map being quite defensive-sided for Europe and Brazil, 59%, 57% respectively, but pretty attacker-sided in both North America and APAC, 50% and 47%. This is, again, the most attacker-sided map for North America, um, which, uh, again, it's hard to really read into that, and I don't know off the top of my head, why that reason is i can't come with you with a with an explanation but it's something interesting to note and it's something to watch out for when you're watching these regions the big um reason for that is going to be um the bar holds that's one of the big reasons at least it's a lot more successful in europe and brazil and that drags that overall win rate up um it's uh it's the most played bomb site in both europe and brazil it has a 61 percent win rate in europe 64 in brazil um, and it seems like they're just uh, able to defend this bomb site a lot better than um, than us here in NA and then over in APAC as well. Um, that's uh, that's reflected in the ordering of uh, of maps or of bomb sites, I should say. In North America, Bar is actually the least played site of the core three. Um, that goes Kitchen, Reading, Bar. Usually, most often uh, in North America, Reading and Bar are pretty common, are pretty close together, and Kitchen's not that far off either. Um, but usually um due to these like according to these stats you do see bar the least so um north american teams i definitely you know watching you get that feel that all three bomb sites are pretty viable and uh you can really go to the three in any order you'd like north america certainly seems to find uh the most success on um the top and bottom floors um, in APAC, similarly, Bar is the most common bomb site, but Reading is right there next to it at 34 rounds compared to 36. Um, but Kitchen is is rarely played inside of uh, APAC, and um, North America and APAC both have one bomb site that uh, helps drag down the win rate even more. Um, APAC really struggling to defend Kitchen, 38% quite low compared to the rest of the world. You know, 57 in NA, 58 in Europe, and 53 in Brazil. 38% is really low for APAC, really seemingly struggle on the bottom floor um, defending here. And then for North America, that bomb site's reading. Um, NA team's just not having a good time defending on the reading room bomb site uh, with 31% win rate um, compared to 59 in EU, 53 in Brazil, and 47 in APAC. So again, it's interesting that uh, Europe and Brazil seem to have this map more figured out on the defensive front, whereas... Um, you know, America struggles in reading room, APAC struggles in kitchen, and both NA and uh, APAC struggle to a lesser extent, but still a bit uh, on the top floor in bar. Then there's mining, uh, and mining is a whole other bag of worms. Again, it's one of those bomb sites every region agrees it's the worst bomb site. They go to it the least. Um, but technically, the highest rated bomb site uh, in Siege, the highest win rate at least, small sample size. Let's make sure that's uh, that's abundantly clear. It's seventy five percent win rate across eight rounds. Um, most played in North America, played four times, seventy five percent win rate. Played quite a lot in Brazil, three times, quite a lot, three times in fourteen maps. Um, 67% once in APAC, and it was one never in Europe. So again, it's maybe that split where it's like, well. It seems like it's going to be a really, you know, the few times it gets played, when it gets thrown as a surprise pick, um, it seems quite successful in NA, it seems quite successful in Brazil. Um, again, because Brazil plays a lot more maps, you know, they're going to be playing this, uh, even the rarer bomb sites a lot more. Um, so NA is experimenting with it a little bit. The other regions really haven't touched it. Europe never touched it. APAC touched it once. And, you, you know, Europe or Brazil touched it three times in 14 maps. Um but with it having such a high win rate and having so much success, um, even as like a map to, or a bomb set to throw off opponents, I'd like to see teams in general go there more. Um, even if uh, you know the other regions started picking it about as much as North America starts picking it, they'd probably find a fair amount of success. Um, so I think I think mining's a really interesting bomb site to defend. 
Um, it's it's crazy how close it is to reading room, and yet the the play rates on those two bomb sites are so vastly different. Um, something I want to talk about on cafe as well, or on theme park as well, I should say. We're on cafe. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's an interesting step that I found and surprised me digging through these. I knew it would be some low played bomb site as a big outlier that, you know, took the most defensible bomb site award, if you want to give it an award. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I guess I never really considered, um, mining dining on cafe to be that bomb site. And rolling right into theme park, um, Europe. <laughs> Europe is the big question mark in the room for this one. Um, Europe doesn't play theme park. At all, really. It was played once in the regular season. It was played a second time in the major as well. Um, at uh, regular season, Navi beat Tempra. And uh, in the major, G2 beat BDS. Both times it was a smash. It was a roll. Um, and so you might kind of think that in both of those um, team that got rolled, Tempra and BDS, uh, perhaps weren't expecting it to get through the bands. Perhaps weren't so prepared on it. Perhaps weren't as good as they thought they were. Um, and so that leaves, you know, an entire region... Minus Navi and G2, but even Navi and G2 having very little, you know, success and very little um, practice in matches on this uh, on this map. Uh, down a map, and I I worry for Europe um, due to that fact. If we ever get back to international competition, I'm sure we will at some point. But you know when that happens, um, because if you're a North American team or Brazilian team or an APAC team, you can look at Europe. You're going up against the Europe squad, and you're like, well, we don't have to worry about theme park. And it's a small thing, and I get that. And yeah, I'm positive that a lot of European teams are practicing this map in the background. They've got strats saved on it. Particularly if international competition comes up, they'll put more work into that. But uh, but it is concerning that an entire region is not playing this map. And I get it. You know, um, this is uh, not a hugely well-liked map. Um, it didn't get played a lot in North America in its first season either. Um, I hope that as time goes on and Europe, you know, finds, uh, you know, gets to play with this map more, they will start to like it. I, I honestly think that some interesting stuff has come out, at least in North America, uh, on theme park. I think lab storage is a bombsite has started to evolve when the Rome game on that bombsite is really starting to look a lot, uh, a lot more interesting. I think, um, holding Armory Throne Room from above has shown a lot of neat stuff. Um, thinking Nade on Space Station with that interesting C4 to deny the janitor hat or the janitor wall into Throne Room was really neat to see in the NAL, if you remember that. Um, you know, some really cool, uh, grenade throws you can do on the top floor, um, to, like, go over walls and hit, like, crazy spots where defenders think they're safe. You know, stuff like that. There have definitely been some interesting improvements happening on Theme Park. Has it been, you know, as fast of a meta shift and as interesting of a map as people maybe had hoped for and people maybe wanted? Um, no, probably not. But I don't think it's, you know, a garbage map that never deserves to be played by any stretch of the imagination. I hope it gets played a little bit more in Europe. Um, because uh, a sample size of one map is, is not anything that uh, I like to go against. And it's going to just make them weaker in international competition. There's, there's no doubt about that. So, uh, enough with that rant. How does Theme Park actually fare? Well, it's pretty defensible in Brazil. 60% overall win rate. Um, less so in North America. 54% for NA and 48% in APAC. Again, another map where it seems that uh, the attackers actually have the advantage, which is quite strange compared to the rest of the world. The big reason in APAC for the very low um, defensible uh, side on this, or yeah, the really low win rate, uh, for defense is the, they've really struggled to hold Bunks. Um, Bunks has been uh, a very good bomb site. Brazil, 73%. North America, 65%. Only 53 in APAC, still over half the uh, half the time, but um, it does seem like it's a bomb site where they're struggling more than other regions, and so maybe that's one where they can look a little bit more outward. Um, in Brazil, I'd say the reason why they're so good at defending on this bomb site is their uh, the really high win rate. Partly, I mean, this isn't the only reason, but partly their really high win rate on lab storage. They also have a ridiculously high win rate on bunks and and daycare. But lab storage sticks out to me: sixty-seven percent um, versus North America and Apex fifty percent on on both those regions. Low sample size. This is the least played bomb site in both Brazil and Apex, but. Um, it's nice to see that there's some, some success being found on lab storage for Brazil, and it is boosting, um, their defensive win rate a little bit more on this, uh, on this bomb site. Um, in terms of ordering, again, North America is sort of the odd duck. Um, we play lab storage more than office. Most teams have lab storage as their, as their third bomb site. It's pretty split. 
um 14 rounds on lab storage 12 rounds on office initiation I think is really interesting how not just in North America but all regions there is such a huge difference between office initiation and uh, and bug stay care. You know they're right beside each other. You know the two rooms on the top floor, one's here and one's here, but one is just so much more defensible. And I think a lot of that is just being able to retreat. You know having that extra you know uh, area to move back when attacks come from the east and attacks usually come from the east. If attacks come from the west, you're still you're know, pretty defensible when you're in bunk daycare. You can put somebody on the arcade stairs. You can put people playing around the yellow stairs uh you can put people back like over the over the balcony to look out and peek some angles so that like top arcade is really difficult to get a hold of uh when you have your whole defensive force there so uh, it's interesting that we see bomb sites so close together so similar apparently um but so different in their win rates and in their play rates um, the play rate mostly seen in North America, the difference of play rate, um, but the win rate seen, uh, differences seen all across the world. Um, way higher defensive win rates on, on Bunk's daycare than office initiation. Um, but North America really favoring labs, um, more so than uh, than any other team or any other region. And again, I think that comes down to a lot of the experimenting that's going on. It took a while for um, lab storage to really ramp up in NA, but we are seeing it more and more. And uh, I hope that uh, NA teams and the rest of the world as well continue experimenting with lab storage. And I hope Europe gets on the map. And last but not least, the newest map in the map pool, Oregon. Um, and this is another one where Europe is a little bit of an oddball out, but every region has its quirks here. Um, overall, win rate is the biggest one where Europe stands out. They're sitting relatively even, 52%, one of the more attacker-sided maps in Europe. Um, every other region sees Oregon as the most or one of the most defender-sided maps. Obviously, in NA, it's our most defender-sided map at 65%. Brazil has 62%, APAC 61%. Um, unlike Theme Park, when Theme Park first came out, Oregon's been played quite a lot, so we do have a lot of those stats to look at, and there is a lot of interesting things to, uh, that you can actually dig out of this. Um, the basement of, uh, of laundry has sort of been a key point where it seems that, uh, North American and European teams have gotten a little bit either worse at holding or better at attacking. I think it's probably better at attacking, uh, this bomb site than what we see in our Brazil and APAC. With the defense rates being significantly higher uh, in BR and APAC uh, when they when they defend on laundry supply, North America and Europe have both uh, got it down to 59% in NA, 55% in Europe, 71 in Brazil, and 68 in APAC. So definitely a difference there uh, you see between the two regions. Dorms is a bomb site where North America has a very high win rate on, um, and honestly, I contribute this to just. Um, poor attacks from NA teams that we've seen, particularly in Europe. I know I saw a really interesting take where, you know, they they aren't focused so much on um, on the attic nor the closet. They're coming from below. I saw a really fun attack from BDS where they brought a sledge, they brought a buck, they brought a maverick, and they threw grenades up to the floor. They threw, you know, obviously buck shotguns through the floor. Um, and, and there was a lot of, like, creative stuff going on, and they did win that round. So if we're seeing more of that in Europe and more of that in the other regions, um, if that gets more adapted by North American teams, I think we could see the win rate um, go down a little bit on the dorms for North America. For now, though, it seems to be a stronghold for NA, and uh, it's one of the reasons why Oregon is one of the most uh, defender of maps in our region. Um, and then there's sort of the argument between uh, meeting versus dining. You know, kitchen is going to be your third bomb site in every single region, um, but where do you go for the next one? And obviously, if you extend out to dining, you can put players in shower, you can sort of uh, defend horizontally but if you go into meeting you can go up above you can play uh in the attic you can play around a vertical hold rather than uh, a more horizontal hold um europe has been the only region again that's favoring dining over meeting every other region seems to think meeting is the better of the two bomb sites um and both read like all four regions seem pretty convinced in this like it's pretty low pick rate from the other bomb site whatever the weak one uh, weaker one is in, in all regions um so that's that's quite interesting to see, and I wonder if maybe Europe would have a higher defensive win rate if they sort of swapped that around. Um, NA certainly has found a lot of success defending on the meeting bomb site, 50, or 75% over 16 rounds. Um, not even going positive defending on kitchen dining, 43%. 
Brazil and APAC haven't really found that same success rate defending on meeting. Um, 46% in Brazil and, and 54% uh, for APAC, but it shows they are still favoring it, and uh, perhaps in the scrims in those regions, they're realizing the same thing that NA are realizing in game day, and that those are uh, the stronger regions. Or perhaps Brazil and APAC are going to look at their win rates. They're going to say, you know what? We're playing better on dining. Let's just go defend dining more. And North America will once again be that sort of odd man out and uh, and have that uh, that difference. So uh, we'll have to wait and find out. And with that, I think we are going to wrap up the video. Um, I think it's kind of eye-opening to me as someone who mostly watches North America, how different NA is from the rest of the world, particularly in our site order selection. Um, it seems like a lot of the world follows what, uh, what Europe does and what Brazil does. Um, but NA really does, uh, do things a little bit different. They play a lot more from below. The win rates, of course, are different throughout the regions. Um, there is no one, like, uh, standard region, obviously. And so, um, different regions certainly develop in different ways. And we're seeing, um, every single region go off from the norm, you know? And different maps will have ah these two team or these two regions are similar and those two regions are similar and yada 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 and so there's really no two regions are alike is what I'm trying to say right and so I think that's the great thing about Siege it's why I want international competition back so bad I've been watching the uh, the majors in my spare time um, in the off season I've been watching all of the LATAM majors the APAC majors the European major um, sort of in post that I didn't get to watch when they were live and so that sort of opened my eyes to different play styles of these uh, other regions not that I you know thought that every region played like North America before but certainly is uh, eye-opening just to see how big those differences are you know in europe they're banning amaru on uh on consulate and in north america i'm counting how how often amaru works which is still zero uh in the u.s division so yeah i think it's neat to look into this um this was pretty lengthy this was pretty rambly on my ends um and i apologize for that but do let me know what you thought of the video in the comments down below if you'd like to see more of this type of stuff let me know i would uh, would love to hear your con comments hopefully this is going up on Sunday, the 6th, I'm recording this Saturday night, so I hope I can get it up for tomorrow. I should be streaming today uh, on Sunday, so uh, check it out, twitch.tv slash jessejchick. Also, follow me on Twitter, jessejchick, um, for all updates. I did just give away two six invitational charm codes um, by doing really fun quizzes. If you watch videos like this, you know, you might be able to uh, have a small advantage of those quizzes. Um, I did have somebody, I gave away all of my codes, but I did have somebody reach out and say, hey, I've got extra codes. I don't know what to do with them. I haven't given them away yet. Do you want to give them away with your quizzes? Um, and so uh, I might uh, end up doing more quizzes, I think. Hopefully I will, um, if that all works out. So, yeah, should be some, uh, some fun over on the Twitter account. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful time. The North American division, I don't believe it's public yet, but it should be returning soon. That's all I can say. Um, Twitch.tv slash Rainbow Six. Europe has already announced their start date. It's starting soon as well. So um, get in and, and watch some Rainbow Six Siege. I'll see you all either on the next stream, the next YouTube video, or the next live broadcast. Till then, take care. This is an outrage. I'm upset. I was nowhere near the body. Wait, I don't understand. That was so stupid of us. Oh shit, I gotta sabotage something probably. You can go do it, right? Oh shit. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, you're so right. You were so 